Well, uh, welcome to team class. Uh, happy Resurrection Sunday for everybody. Uh, it's kind of a weird circumstance that we're in. Uh, of course, we're not assembled together. We're all in our own homes watching this or wherever you're at on your phone. But it doesn't matter. We can still celebrate the, uh, our resurrected Savior. Jesus died on uh, Jesus died, rose again the third day, and as we pick, I mean, this might not be the exact weekend that some people say it was in the fall, but it's arguable, but we, I think we picked pick this uh, day aside to celebrate that, and it don't matter when, it's like the Jews celebrating Passover, but as long as we, we can celebrate it and we can remember it, that's all that matters. Well, you know, usually we always have games and everything, but uh, I guess I'll just get straight into the lesson today. You know, on a Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, most people, they talk about, you know, that's out of like John 20 or basically the, the story of, you know, Jesus crucified and all the different people and every rose again and when he ascended up to heaven. And I want to teach about that, but on a different aspect. I guess uh, what I want to talk about is, is Jesus, the high priest. And uh, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Hebrews chapter 9. Well, pretty much the only place I'll have you turn is in Hebrews. I'll, any other verses I need to read, I'll read off the paper. But uh, Hebrews chapter 9, uh, before I begin, let's pray. Father, heaven, God, thank you for this day. Give us to be here, God. Thank you for you uh, rising again on the third day, God. Thank you for you conquering death, hell, and the grave, God. I ask you to please bless this lesson today, God, and bless all the other lessons, bless pastors and preachers. And this morning, God, I ask you to please you give us a good rest of the day and good time of family, even though we can all not be together, God. Thank you for the opportunity to give us this technology for us to do this. Because, you know, 20 years ago, they wouldn't have this privilege to do this, God. So we just need to look at the things we need to be thankful for. There's a lot of things we can look at and get upset. But, God, uh, you've given us so many blessings, God. Thank you for everything you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Hebrews chapter 9, and I want to read four verses, which I'm not going to tie it into what I want to talk about today till the end. But uh, I would like to start off reading some Bible verses. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 11 says, But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered at once into the holy place, having attained eternal redemption for us. For the blood of bulls and of goats and of ashes and the heifer, sprinkling in the unclean and sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself at that spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, that which are called might receive the promises of eternal inheritance. Well, the title you want to put behind it is Jesus the High Priest, which I'm going to go through a whole bunch of things. These are pretty... You know, when you think of Jesus the high priest, you can go through a whole bunch of things. How about Melchizedek and that? All throughout Hebrews, like in the Hebrews 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, talk about, you know, Jesus being our high priest, our different aspects of that. But I want to keep it simple. And uh, just to start off with, you know, many things that, many things from the day that Jesus died, or you said the day Jesus was born, through his ministry, to the day he died, and to the day he rose again and sent into heaven. Many things were fulfilled and accomplished between that set of time. Everything that happened, though, between his death, his burial, and his resurrection was a necessity. You know, his death and burial doesn't mean nothing, and Jesus didn't rise again the third day. And all these different things had to happen, and Jesus had to send it up in heaven. He couldn't just stay here on earth. He had to go be with his father. And I'll explain why here in a little bit. But Jesus had to be a sacrifice to be our high priest. And uh, I want to get into a few things. Uh, the first one is, Jesus had to be a sinless sacrifice in order to become our high priest. And how do you know that? Uh, 1 Peter 1.18 says, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. So it says here, verse 19 in 1 Peter chapter 1, eight, or chapter 1, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish, without spot. Jesus had to be perfect. He could not, he couldn't have one sin. You know, a lot of people like to categorize, categorize sin. And like, we shouldn't really do that as far as like, a lie is a lie, but people say, well, that's just a white lie. And this, Jesus couldn't do nothing. He was perfect from 
all his 33 years of his life. He never committed one sin. And he had to be that, to be perfect, to be the sacrifice. Because, you know, you look in the Old Testament, how they sacrificed uh, different things that were corrupted. You know, if we, they never made human sacrifices. I mean, they give an example of Isaac, but, you know, God provided a lamb. But uh, it's a picture of what was to come. But we're all corrupted. We're corrupted by sin. Not, and animals, they're not able to take away sins. But the only person that could never take away or wash from sins is Jesus and the, the blood of Jesus Christ. So Jesus had to be sinless to be our high priest. Jesus had to shed, the next thing is Jesus had to shed his blood on the cross and die on the cross. Hebrews 9, 16 through 22, which is right, made page over the same page. It says, for where a testament is there must also be the necessity, be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead, otherwise is no strength after all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Jesus had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats, and with water and scarlet wool, and a hyssop, and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of testament, with God have enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. So, Jesus had to shed his blood, and he had to die on a cross. Uh, Hebrews 10.4, I'm going to read scripture to pr prove this, and I'll talk about it. Hebrews 10.4 says, For it is not possible that the, this, that's what I was just talking about, it is not possible that the bloods of bulls and goats should take away sin. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared for me. So God said, you know, not taking, not taking the offering of the bulls and goats, but he provided a body. Like it, God became flesh. Talks about verse number five in Hebrews chapter 10. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. So God said, you know, all those bulls, all those rams, everything that they sacrificed, he found no pleasure. I mean, that was not going to forgive your sins permanently. Then say, I lo, I come into the volume of the book, it is written of me. To do thy will, O God. And ab ab above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, and offerings for sin thou wouldest not, neither has pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Then he said, Lo, I come to do thy will. Jesus said, I will come to do the will of the Father. O God, he taketh away the first that he may establish the second, taketh away the old, the Old Testament or the old covenant, and he's coming to establish the new covenant. By which we will we will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So in order for Jesus to be a high priest, he had to be sinless. He also had to be, or he also had to die and shed his blood on the cross. And Hebrews 10, verse 10, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Once for all, and that's one of my favorite phrases in the Bible, and I'll explain that. I'll get to that later in the lesson. Uh, the third thing is Jesus had to rise from the dead, which <laughs> and I can get you excited to think about that. But uh, 1 Corinthians 15 12. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain? Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have not testified that God, that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so that uh, dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. So, you know how Jesus was laid in the ground for three days. You know, it's funny when the Bible talks about, uh, like, if you're saved and you die, it talks about, you know, you see a couple times about the word sleep. That means our bodies are in the earth, but our spirits dwell with God. And, you know, one day when the trumpet sound, you know, dead and Christ will rise first, that's what that's talking about when it talks about, you know, they, then they which also are falling asleep, they that their bodies are in the ground, they're dead, their spirits are with God, are perished. I mean, so if there's no resurrection of Jesus Christ, then our faith is in vain. There's no point to it because, the I mean, as important as the cross is, it, if there's no resurrection, then there's no importance to it. It's nothing. And 
Then next thing is, so Jesus was sinless. He had to be sinless to be the high, become our high priest. He had to sacrifice himself, die on the cross, and shed his blood. He had to rise from the dead. Or if he didn't, it was all in vain. Then the last one, the last thing I'll talk about before I get into the points of the message is Jesus had to take his blood. This is one I really love. That's why I read those verses at the beginning of the, the video. Jesus had to take his blood to heaven. I believe he had to apply it to the mercy seat. And what do you mean by this? I believe, well, if you go back to what I read at the beginning, Hebrews 9 11 says, But Christ, being calm and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. So if you think about it, the tabernacle in the Old Testament, you know, had the table, like, table of showbread, the uh, golden candlestick, all those different things, outer court, inner court, and all the holies, holies. All that was a shadow or is an image of what's in heaven. You know, I think it talks about in Hebrews 8, where it talks about God pitched this tabernacle, not man. So I believe, you know, remember in, uh, I can't remember what book it is, but when Jesus rose from the dead and Mary saw him, it says, Mary, you know, God went on the ground and wanted to touch, touch, touch his feet, but Jesus said, you know, don't touch me. I, he said, I have not ascended to my father yet. I believe if she would have touched him, she, would, she might have, like, I don't know if it would have just tainted it or whatever, but I believe this principle is seen here that Jesus had to take his blood he had to take it to heaven before God the Father, and he had to apply the blood. Because, you know, think about the priests. When they, whenever they made sacrifices, you know, they went once a year to the holies of holies, and they made a sacrifice, you know, for the year, and they did it every year, and they were commanded to do it every year. You know, that, I think the word is, you know, you think about the blood atonement. You know, that word means a cover. So when the blood is applied to the, you know, the mercy seat sprinkled, you know, when God looks at that, God looks at us, this, our sins are covered. Our sin, sins are remembered no more. And if it wasn't for that, then we really wouldn't have no hope. Uh, if you turn to Hebrews 9, 22 through 26, it says, or right, starting 21. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. There it says right there, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in heaven should be purified with these. So if you read the verses before, it, compared, it talks about, you know, what Moses did and how he was commanded to make these sacrifices. But it talks, then it talks about the pattern of these things, the pattern of what Moses did. It says these things in heaven should be purified with these. The same, it said, but the heavenly things themselves with a better sacrifice than these. It talks about uh, bulls and goats. But it about we need a better sacrifice for our sins. And who was it? That was Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 24, For Christ is not entered into the holy place, made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but in the heaven itself, not to appear in the presence of God for us. So, you know, another thing I need to point out, verse 25, it says, Nor yet that he should offer himself often uh, as high priest entering the holy place every year with blood. Not yet that he should offer himself often. You know, uh, this, is, this is pretty this is good stuff if you think about it. When God uh, looks at us and he sees the blood, that means our sins are forever gone. But uh, the priest, whenever he went in every year to the Holy of Holies, he did that every year. But it says, not nor yet that he should offer himself often, but as a high priest entered the holy place every year with the blood of others. But, I mean, they did it often. But when Christ went in there, he did it once for all. And I'm telling you, if that, is some, that is something that should humble every Christian that, you know, many Christians out there, they want to, they like, they, they say, uh, you know, you Baptists, you believe in uh, easy believism, or you believe in all these different things, you believe in uh, uh, whatever you believe, salvation is so easy, it's not based on works, and all these different things, which the Bible clearly shows that salvation is by grace alone, by faith through Jesus Christ. But, they believe you can lose your salvation. And I have many friends that I work with that believe that. But when it says once for all, I mean, that pretty much lay, lays it out. If Jesus Christ's sacrifice is good enough to save us, then I think it's good enough to keep us. And to say that you can lose your salvation, I think is a direct insult to God to say that, oh, well, the sacrifice is not good enough. Uh, I'm trying to remember where it said it talks about, it talked about, uh, uh, oh, yeah, here in verse 26. 
Well, see, it says if Jesus had to do it often, then he often would have suffered since the foundation of the world. That means when he dealt with on the cross, if he had, if uh, it wasn't good enough once for all, that means Jesus would have to keep continually getting uh, suffer, suffering and all this different uh, punishment. But no, uh, one sacrifice, one resurrection, and that was good enough to cover our sins forever and granted us salvation, which uh, every Christian has, every person in the world has the opportunity to receive, which I mean, that gets me into just the two points I want to talk about today. Uh, I laid that all, I just said all that simple stuff that everybody already knows, but Jesus, in order to be our high priest, had to be sinless. He had to sacrifice himself, shed his blood. He had to rise from the third day and he had to go to heaven, send into heaven. Because of all this, number one, we get access to salvation. And Hebrews, I can stay in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 9, if you look at verse 27, it says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, verse 28, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So, you know, it talks about all this stuff. It talks about him, you know, going to heaven and all this stuff. And uh, it talks about the sacrifice. But then it talks about, you know, what we are, it just says, it's a point of man wants to die. That means we're all, everybody besides, unless you're alive for the rapture, you're going to die. And then we're appointed into judgment. But because what Jesus Christ did, it said, uh, talks about how he's offered salvation to us. And he's appeared the second time unto salvation, without sin unto salvation. So the blood of Christ is able to keep us until either we die or he comes again. And the second thing is, I, I can talk about salvation all day long. Uh, the second thing is, we can take our needs straight to God because of all this. We don't need a, like, so the Jews needed a high priest to take in, to set, you know, the, the blood to the Holy of Holies, applied to the mercy seat, taken from the altar to the, and all this stuff. But, and the, they, basically the Jews relied on the high priest to do that for them. But Jesus Christ is our high priest. He's our advocate. Advocate means one who pleads the cause of another in a court. First uh, John 2, 1 says, My little children, these things write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And you know what? Uh, turn to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. While you turn, I'll talk about this just a page over, but... Uh, it's amazing. So since Jesus did all this for us, that we can go, we can take our needs straight to God. And this is one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 19, it says, Having therefore, brother, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath, he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, of having an high priest over the house of God. Let us draw with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Verse 19, Having therefore, brethren, boldness enter in the holiest, holiest by the blood of Jesus Christ. So I'm telling you what, uh, if you're saved today, that means your sins have, your sins are gone. That means, uh, God talks about in Lincoln, uh, oh, I can't remember, uh, talks about our sins are buried in the depths of the sea, talks about in Psalms, our sins are separated as far as east is from the west, all these different things. Basically, the, you know, the blood of Jesus Christ washed us clean. We've seen that blood, you know, are you washed in the blood, all these different songs? Well, that's, that's true. If you're a saved person, that means your sins are gone. God looks at us, and he doesn't see our sins. He sees the blood of Jesus Christ. He sees us as clean. He, basically, because whenever we get saved, we see the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We get that imputed righteousness that the Bible talks about, which means that when God looks at us, I basically, he, he, looks, he sees his son. He sees the perfect lamb, lamb without blemish. And that's something we can rejoice in. I, I believe if you ever have a uh, one day that, you know, especially there in these times that we have, you look around and you get, you know, broken heart, you get depressed. I'm telling you what, if you're saved, you got something you can always look back to. And that day that you got saved, mine was March 30th, 2011. And that's something you can always rejoice in, always something to get happy about. Because I don't think a Christian, there's always time, you know, please guys talked about there's another time to mourn, all this kind of stuff. But Christian has no reason to stay sad for any length of time in this world because we, we're saved. We have Jesus Christ as our advocate. Any, any need that we have, we can go straight to God about, and he's, he'll always hear us. 
And, you know, it's like, if you think about it, how many times have we failed God as Christians? I mean, every, every Christian on this, that's lived in this world has failed God multiple times. But, you know, God is willing for us to come back to him, you know, confess our sins, and he's able to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible talks about all these different verses, but and we have all this because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, because what he did when he rose again the third day, and what he did when he ascended into heaven, we have, we have all this granted to us. If we accept, accept that sacrifice, we realize, you know, we're sending all that, all that stuff that, uh, I'm sure if you're watching this video, but even if you're not, if, if you're not, if you're not, a, or you're not sure that you diet, go ahead, I'm telling you, today would be the best day to figure that out. And there's no better day, I think, the day that we set aside to celebrate the resurrection day, because because of that, because of what we celebrate today is, is why we have salvation. So I'm telling you, as Christians, we need to rejoice and, you know, not, not we can't we can't really go door to door, soul winning and all that kind of stuff right now. But I'm telling you, you know, our pastors offered the opportunity to pass out fly, or uh, mail out flyers and all these things. And some of you guys, if people are still at work, take some traffic to work. I'm telling you, tell people about what Jesus Christ did for us this day. I'm telling you, it is the best thing that's ever happened. The, those three days, you know, whenever, whenever he died, it's funny, the apostles forgot what Jesus said, that he was going to rise again on the third day. They said they scattered, and they did all these different things. They were depressed. But, you know, he, Jesus told them. And there's also a prophecy in the Old Testament that, you know, he would die. He, would, he also would rise again on the third day. And he is he, a picture of what we do. Because, you know, when we get saved, we, just like Jesus did, we conquer hell, we conquer death, and conquer the grave. Because, you know, if you die without Christ, you're going to spend eternity in, uh, in hell and like a fire one day. But because we get salvation, we get cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We have a high priest, which is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. I, I did not write that verse down. But because we have that, we can access salvation, and we can take our needs straight to God. So uh, on the Resurrection Sunday, I, like we, I don't like to use the word Easter a whole lot. I like to say Resurrection Sunday because it's the day that we celebrate Jesus rose from the grave. I uh, want you to think about, think about this, Jesus with a sinless life. He did all these things. He died and shed his blood on Calvary. He rose again the third day, and then he sent it up into heaven. Because of all this, we not only have the hope of eternal, uh, eternal life, but we can also look to the second coming. We can also, uh, we, we we're downtrodden or we're ever going through a trial or tribulation. We can go straight to God and say, God, you know, ask help, ask help from God. And you know what? He promised he'll never put any burden on us that we're not able to bear, with, and it's only with his help. If we ever try to do something on our own flesh, it'll fail us every single time. But if we lean on God uh, 100%, it'll never let us down. You know, things might not always be easy in life, but if we trust in God, uh, he'll never let us down.